KNC Masterpiece back here on 105.3 The Fan right now, live on Radio Row in Las Vegas. We bring to you the AEW International Champion, Orange Cassidy. How are you, sir? I'm very good. That was, um, that was the best anybody, I think, today has introduced me, so I might have to bring you on the road with me to, uh, to announce me because that made me feel like I'm important. I've always felt like I would be a good hype guy. Yeah, I really you're crushing it so far. And I love your resplendent title is what I'm going to go yes, with there. This is the AEW International Championship. It was formerly the All-Atlantic Championship. But for some reason, <laughs> we decided to level. We called it leveling it up. And I wrestled Jeff Jarrett in Canada to change the All-Atlantic Championship to the International Championship in a defense Presented by Shazam 2, Fury of the Gods. <laughs> and I am not making that up. So the title being leveled up clearly worked out better than the box office of the movie it represented. For sure. Uh, I, I think after that match, after the, like, I think I went on a run of 35 defenses. Um, the championship became the championship that was defended every single week against very different opponents and i was very very fortunate like I, I could show a lot of different styles of professional wrestling and to be on into a mainstream audience right like i don't think we get to see that often and the the uh this title will remain in my backpack which i carry around everywhere i go uh for as long as i could possibly can um because the next person that takes it for me better be ready to wrestle because you're gonna have to how difficult are the logistics of carrying the belt around, though, especially given the travel and everything like that? You put it in the carry-on. You put it through the x-ray. The people <laughs> will, the, the TSA agent will look, and then they'll do this. They'll see who's standing there, and then they'll look back, and then they'll look, <laughs> and they go, are you a champion? And I'm like, yes. And they go, cool. And then I'm done. So that's uh, that's the hardest it is. I, I know, obviously, different company, but I always thought we had Seth Rollins on long ago when he won Money in the Bank. He said he started packing clothes and stuff in the briefcase to make sure he was utilizing it to the utmost. Oh, wow, that's pretty smart. That is. I always uh, thought that, too. That's pretty good. Now, Saturday, collision. Not that all matches aren't difficult, but you're going to wrestle somebody who's really known for beating the living hell out of people I know. in I know. Ishii. I know. Is it exciting because of who it is, or are you like, no, because of that other part about beating the hell out of other people? Yeah. I, I, I mean, <laughs> listen, I never look forward to wrestling somebody like that. I never look – I don't look forward to wrestling anybody. <laughs> uh, right. Everybody hurts in their own unique way. But uh, I know Tomohiro Ishii very, very well. We teamed a lot. He's part, we're part of the same group called Chaos. And he wanted a title shot. So I'm going to give him one because he's a legend and I respect him Im uh, immensely. Um, does that put a damper on my weekend plans of the Super Bowl? Right. Yes, it does right. because I have to wrestle him and I know how hard he hits. So I think the strategy will be I don't get hit, but I hit him. Uh, Good it, luck with that. I, uh, I, it ain't. Yeah, I'm going to need. Thank you. I'm going to need it. Now, if you're talking about legendary wrestlers, especially Japanese, New Japan wrestlers, I have to at least take my shot. What day do you think Okada is going to debut officially official with AEW? I mean, I don't know. I don't talk to Okada. Uh, uh, Rocky Romero and Trent Beretta and Chuck Taylor do because they were they're more close with Okada. Yeah. Which Okada is in the same group, Chaos. Yeah. And like, so technically we're in the same group. And I did team with Okada in Philadelphia this past year. It was me and Okada against Claudio Castagnoli and Brian Danielson. That was on a dynamite. So if you want to check that out, hey, do your thing. But uh, yeah, Okada, um, you know, I don't. I can't really comment because I don't know him. Right. I mean, I, w I want him to come to AEW right. for right. sure because right. he's better than me. So that's great. Like, get him. Let's get him here. But uh, I really don't know what he's going to do. Are there other wrestlers in particular, whether they're contemporary from the past or hell, if you know in the future, mm. that you're a big fan of, whether you've wrestled them or not? Uh, I mean, I I like different in professional wrestling. I like people that try to go out there and do different things and try to and try different things. 
I think professional wrestling is evolving rapidly at this point. And I think there's, we're getting this clash of like old school where now if you wrestle old school, that's just a different style of what professional wrestling is now, right. which is great. Um, uh, I never look forward to wrestling anybody. I don't want to wrestle anybody when I don't have to. Right. Uh, so I, I, I just keep an open mind and want to wrestle whoever they want to wrestle because then I can show that I know a lot of different styles, so I could probably wrestle that style too. So that's why I brag about that a little bit. I could do it all. I like that. When I, when I have to. When you have to. When I have to. Uh, well, and it was, it was interesting. I don't know how long ago you gave this quote, but it really, like, I thought that makes a lot of sense to me when you were talking about people who maybe don't get your character or anything like that, and you were like, I don't feel like I necessarily have to explain my art or performance. And I, I just, I really like that yeah. answer. It is one of those things where, for some reason, people feel that I need to explain what I'm doing. I, I consider professional wrestling an art form, and I was scared to always say that, but I'm not scared anymore because that's exactly what it is. And I don't think anybody should be told what they feel when they watch professional wrestling because that's the purpose of art. It's to make you feel things. And, yeah, I'm the guy that will make you laugh, but I'm also going to make you feel anger and sadness and happiness. So, like, um, these people talk about, like, oh, you're not doing like, – I'm, I'm not – I'm not wrestling for you. So I don't care what you say. Right. Um, and I'm talking about those people that are, like, negative in the yeah. sense that, are like, it's, a, it's the garbage criticism of, like, you know, people hoping I fall off the face of the earth. Like, oh, that, that's going to help. Like, because guess what? I don't care what you say. I'm still going to be on TV wrestling, so. I might be butchering the saying, but it goes something along the lines of it only took 15 years to become an overnight sensation. Sure, yeah. Do you? Did you feel that way at all? Because I know by no means have you only been doing this for like four years. By no means at no, all. No. But it felt like, obviously, with AEW, you exploded to, as you referenced earlier, a national audience. Yeah, it was. Uh, I've been wrestling for like 18 years. And, uh, you know, you do a lot of stuff for many, many years because you love it and you think you're doing the right thing. You get a lot of advice from people and you take that advice, literal, and then you just don't go anywhere. And then when you watch all your friends have success and go get signed by other companies and go overseas and you're still not, you, you kind of just say, like, all right, I, I, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to be me. I'm going to do what I want to do. And Orange Cassidy is me, and I get to do that. And I, I, it, it took me a long time to figure that out. So I, I, I always tell people, hey, if you want to really – if you want to make an impact, you got to, you just got to be different. you got to be unique, and uh, that's what I try to do. So uh, it took me a long time to figure that out. AEW is now just to, to get, getting to experience the latest version of that. What is it a difficult dynamic that you're happy for those friends, but at the same time, I don't know if jealous or env oh, envy is uh, see, in your... that's the thing. I, I, I don't think jealousy can necessarily be a bad thing. I think you could be jealous of somebody, but you just... You still support them, sure. right? Like I think, I think, yeah. I think you need to feel that drive of like, oh, I I want that, and then so how can I get that? And I'm not one to complain. I just go do it. I don't need to talk about it. Are there a lot of people like that in the wrestling business? Because I feel like I mean, there's probably every business is like this, but wrestling especially, you hear a lot about malcontents or yeah. whatever. Yeah, and I'm very grateful for AEW because they're you know the young bucks are some of the founding members yep. of All Elite Wrestling, and they're genuinely the nicest people on, uh, on Earth. And they're very, they're, they're, they're genuine. And I, they've never told me a lie. They're, they're great dudes, and it's very tough to get that in professional wrestling. Sting is another example. So when all those people are coming to one place, it's probably a good place. Yeah. The, the Young Bucks, I, it was Matt. I just ran into him at a Ring of Honor show, and he's just, like, hanging out, watching the card, the yep. rest of the card with his wife. Yep. And I was just like, oh, I don't mean to bother. And he's like, hey, how's it going? And he just seemed like the nicest guy. We've had Sting on the show. He's a, he's a Dallas guy, so yeah, no, he, he's a really nice guy, We're very, guy very too. lucky to have Sting. And Sting will actually be having his last match on March 3rd uh, Greensboro. in Greensboro, like the home of Sting. And it's, it's, it's going to be Sting and Darby Allen against the Young Bucks. And I, just, I know I said all those good things about the Young Bucks. 
but that was like five years ago when I started and they hired me. Uh, now they're monsters. They are like. Well, I saw what happened yeah. after the tag title yeah. match. Um, so it'll be Sting and Darby Allen against the Young Bucks in Sting's last ever match. Um, and the impact that Sting had on all of us in the locker room in AEW. And I'm just saying that from when he was here with us, but in professional wrestling in general. So we're very lucky to have him. And uh, I was, I could say that I, I was on a tag team with Sting right, at one point. Right. So. How, how cool is it, whether it's Sting, was it was Tully Blanchard, Jake Roberts. Like, there are a lot of veteran or old school going back to it wrestlers have you did you get the chance or do you get the chance to pick their brains along the way or uh i think it's it's inevitable when you're backstage and i'm i'm, I'm just hanging out trying to find a place to sleep and one of these legends walk up to me and it's like yeah i'm gonna talk to him i always i think it's important i think they they will give they will show their perspective they will tell me their perspective on what i'm doing and uh you know do i necessarily have to take that and apply it literally, no, but I take that and I absorb it and I think about how I can make that unique to me. So, and they understand that and they appreciate that. So I've had pretty good conversations with them and uh, and then I just go find a place to lay down because I'm probably already beat up. And right, tired. right. So we're out here at the Super Bowl, but on Sunday, are you more stoked for the Super Bowl or the Puppy Bowl? So I actually did uh, publicity for publicity for the Puppy Bowl because it's like, part of the same company i don't know yeah listen they said show up pet some puppies say watch the puppy bowl so i did it <laughs> and listen it was great i love puppies i love cats i love dogs and so i just was the emerald shelter was hanging around uh and there is an aew puppy in it so i will be watching and rooting on whatever the aew puppy is and i had a puppy in it two years ago too oh an orange cassidy puppy didn't do great but oh well just too laid back and relaxed for Pretty the competitive much. environment. I was, I, was, I was proud of the puppy no matter what. We just got a puppy. I don't know if you're a Star Wars guy or not. Went with Boba Fetch. Boba Fetch is a very good name. And I feel pretty good about that. A very good name. I get it on uh, Twitter. People was like, oh, this is my, I got a cat. We called it Orange Cat City. And I, I'm, 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 I'm okay with that. That's not bad. I That's usually <laughs> hate stuff like that, but I'm okay with that. My, my wife knows how much I love Star Wars and how I was kind of on the fence because we have another dog. And she goes, I figured maybe if we came up with a name you like that would push it over the edge. Yeah. And it really did. Yeah. So that's been outstanding. Do you have a prediction for Super Bowl? I don't know. I keep telling everybody the Chiefs, but I don't really know anything. <laughs> okay. All like, right. Like, Great. yeah, Chiefs. I don't know. I, 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 I do watch football. It's just, I just, you know, I'm just there to have a good time. Hey, yeah. I both, I hope both teams have fun. Oh my gosh. You and my wife get along great. She has a shirt that says, I hope both teams have fun. That is why we did not play on the same team on game night for a while. Cause she there, goes, yeah. I just want everybody to have a good time. Yeah. I was like, I want to win. And so she's like, if I'm on the team with you, I want to win. Otherwise I just hope that's great. Both teams uh, hey, play hard. Hey, that's a great partner. Yeah, you know, absolutely. That's, good. that's really good. She is the best. Well, thank you very much. And seriously, not to blow smoke or anything like that, but I, I'm really on board with you when you talked about elevating the international championship now in your second reign. I think you've made it a must-see title defense again and again and again on Dynamite Collision. So I appreciate that. I appreciate you saying that. Uh, and guess what? I'm not going to stop doing it. So I hope you don't, hope you, I hope you don't get sick of it yet. Not at all. Not at all. Ladies and gentlemen, Orange Cassidy, there you go, right here on 105.3 The Fan.